Zachary Conan here. Today, we're going to be talking about Die Hard with a Vengeance, 1995. And uh, don't worry, even though we're talking about something that is super popular, super even arguably generic, all of my videos are incredibly personal and intimate. If for no other reason than I don't know how to make any other kind of video, but they're also long-winded, so I'm going to light this cigarette. By the end of the cigarette, I have to stop talking about Die Hard with a Vengeance. Here we go. Mm. It's a little windy or something. Let me get some coffee. Die Hard with a Vengeance is amazing. All right, um, Die Hard 1 is obviously the best film in the franchise, but I... When people say they grew up on movies, I don't think they really know what that means. I grew up on Die Hard 1, 2, and with a Vengeance. With a Vengeance in 1995 when it came out, I was 5 years old. I probably watched that movie 40 times between um, five being 5 years old and 8 years old. I watched it all of the time. I was obsessed with the movie. The thing that's really great about Die Hard is that naturally I'm a person who is attracted to villains. I always love the villains of the story, and the reason that I know that Die Hard is so great is because I'm equally attracted to both, if not more, to John McClane than villains. That's how I know that's actually a great story, and that Bruce Willis is actually a person of intense charisma, and is just a, kind of like a wonderful action star, because I still love him. I, I'm always, like, uh, they describe um, De Niro in Goodfellas as someone who honestly roots for the villains in movies. That's, that's me. That, that is me, except for something like Die Hard. I want McClane to win, even though I love the Gruber brothers, for instance. Jeremy Irons blows me away. Okay, this morning... Okay, <laughs> hold on. I've watched Die Hard with a Vengeance a million times, and this morning, what, what kind of brought this video on was I finally saw an alternate ending to it that I've never seen before involving Jeremy Irons and Bruce Willis playing Russian roulette with a Chinese rocket launcher at some German bar. Okay, I saw Jeremy Irons blow himself up with a Chinese rocket launcher after getting a riddle wrong. That was amazing. Today's going to be a fantastic day. But I love Simon Gruber. And I love, uh, this is part of the course stories for, um, the Die Hard franchise. This was originally a script called Simon Says, its own standalone piece, and then it was even reworked into a Lethal Weapon sequel. And then that's when you got John McTiernan coming on board and going, no, oh, it's been a little bit since Die Hard, let's do a Die Hard film. Now, what separates this from your normal stupid action movie, and even Roger Ebert kind of agrees with me on this, um, not to the extent that I'm going to say. He said that uh, Simon's scheme is wonderful. I'm going to go a step further and say it's one of my favorite schemes in dumb action movies. It's one of the best schemes ever to... <laughs> Oh my god, it's all about diversions, riddles, fun, humor, and sadism. You, <laughs> you rob Fort... You, I'm sorry, you don't rob Fort Knox, you rob the Federal Reserve Bank in New York City by co completely distracting all of the police in New York City to go searching through schools for bombs, and then you say that you destroy all of the gold in the world to kind of redistribute the, uh, <laughs> the world surplus... Uh, gold and money and everything, you redistribute that amongst the ocean, only you keep it for yourself, and then you get this awesome moment where you go, yesterday we were an army without a country, now we have to decide which country we want to buy. Jeremy Irons is so good in here, and I know that Bruce Willis is also great, and Sam Jackson, because they were actually able to stand up to this, like, Shakespearean, um, flawless actor. Uh, Jeremy Irons is the perfect person to cast as Hans Gruber's brother. And yes, that was a huge pen drop moment for me, and I still feel it and get really giddy when they're in the car, and, um, the FBI agents are asking McLean all these stupid questions, and there's this one guy in the back with sunglasses who obviously knows his shit, he knows what's up, and he's not saying anything until, the name Gruber mean anything to you, detective? <laughs> Yes, because it's Hans Gruber's brother. Mm. And this is also one of those... Look, I'm cheating because the cigarette went out. I get extra time. This is also one of those movies where I could do the lines verbatim, but mostly just Simon's lines. Like, this is where I learned the St. Ives riddle and all sorts of things like that, but I love... Uh, I thought you didn't even like your brother. You called him an asshole. There's a difference between not liking one's brother and not caring when some dumb Irish flatfoot drops him out of a window. Simon, 
Simon, you rule. And McTiernan, I think this is his best directed film. I think Die Hard and Predator are probably better films than Die Hard with a Vengeance, but I think it's his best directed film. There are so many amazing sequences. When Simon is finally introduced, you get an amazing uh, robbery scheme, an amazing robbery setup. Do 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 and his henchmen Matthias and Katya. Katya has a murder in this um, in this movie. That's one of my favorite murders ever filmed. I don't care. There's like they're going to the Federal Reserve Bank, right? And there's this one guy who's like. Ch -ch 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 like, just kind of holding down the fort all by himself kind of thing, and he's freaking out trying to get bullets into his shotgun. And you can see on the screen, on, on the security monitor screen, uh, Katya coming in there, doing her, like, little sexy hip dance, or weird little, like, Nazi-fied sexy hip dance, coming in there with this crazy haggard dagger, and doing this, like, spinning around thing and cutting his throat, and then it's, like, so well choreographed, like, a terrible rape or a terrible dance as a rape, and Simon grabs her arm and is like, I think he's dead, my dear. And it's so well done. Like, moments like that in action films are elating, and that's why action films are so important and so incredible. And also, this action film is important for another reason. Uh, Rewatching it last night for, I don't know, the five millionth time in my life, I realized that this city is full of colorful people. Um, most of them do not seem very grateful to Zeus or John McClane during this whole thing. It doesn't really give you very good reasons to want to see this city thrive. And it's kind of cool in that way. That's very 1995, and I wish we could have saw uh, a, a bit more of that. We sh I wish we saw that ethos carried over into our modern cinema today. But this movie really works because Simon Gruber is actually a phenomenal villain. He's... <laughs> He's up there in the rankings of great Bond villains, only he's better than most of them. Better than all of them. And of course, you, you love seeing your effete, over-intellectual, hyper-verbose uh, <laughs> German, um, British German, being murdered by a rocket launcher with yippee ki -yay, motherfucker at the end of it. That's, as an American, that's what gets you going. That's what gets you off. But this movie is so much fun. They're, they're, this is one of the best aged action movies ever. You see lines of cord just slice people in half. Uh, huge explosions that carry and lift our heroes up out of the earth, up out of the gutters. And there are interesting twists and turns. Um, mostly being the revelations upon revelations of what Simon's true plan is. And not only that he is Hans Gruber's brother, and as I said earlier, Alan Rickman and Jeremy Irons are the best ideas to cast as brothers. And I was kind of having fun brainwashing. I was like, if I could have a Gruber Brothers origin story, who would I cast as the Gruber Brothers? And call me crazy, but here's what I'm feeling. Michael Fassbender as uh, Simon, as a young Simon, and Benedict Cumberbatch as a young Hans. I think that would be wonderful, but that's, but that's uh, escaping the point. The point here is that this is wonderful action filmmaking, and it's also Bruce Willis giving one hell of a shit about doing a, 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 good, a good film. Uh, we've had, I don't know, about 15 years now of Bruce Willis not caring at all. This is Bruce Willis caring, and he's able to emit a lot of pathos that you are able to receive from his performance as John McClane in this film. This is really, to me, Bruce Willis' swan song. And it's, it's absolutely incredible. He is an intensely likable, intensely relatable, um, mostly a tragic kind of hero, because after all of his heroic works, he is still completely unrespected, and, uh, in this one, separated from his wife and children, an alcoholic and a chain smoker. And he's got a lot of issues on his hands. You see, that's really what the American character is. There are so many American action movies that fail to address what the true American character is. And the true American character is always someone who feels like an underdog, no matter how fortunate they actually are. So if you want to make a great American action film, you have to position the the villain as someone like Simon Gruber, someone like Jeremy Irons, someone who is so articulate, so exact, so much more intelligent than your hero, that it's not even a contest. It's not even a contest of wit um, or of intellect, because John McClane would easily die. What it is is a contest of death. And that's where the diehard comes in. 
John McClane wins because he's difficult to kill, not because he is more talented than the villains. And he's just stubborn. I, I love Die Hard with a Vengeance. I could watch this movie all the time, and uh, I should just say could because I have, and I do that all the time. Um, three movies I can never get tired of are Die Hard 1, 2, and 3, but with a Vengeance holds a a really uniquely special place in my heart because uh, when people say they grew up on movies, like I said earlier, I don't think they understand what that actually means. What it means is you went home every single day and you watched it, and then before you went to bed you rewound that VHS tape and you played it as you fell asleep and you memorized every line, and that's kind of where you learned what heroism was. It's kind of where you learned what mad villainy was. That's where you learned your ethics and morality. And what's interesting is that Die Hard with a Vengeance actually has a lot of really valuable lessons for to, to kind of bequeath you with. You know? Odd friendships, uh, always being, always making sure that no one's making a fool of you. Standing, being, being difficult to kill, being difficult to remove, and always coming back. Wonderful. And I love the, uh, remember the PlayStation 1 classic video game, um, Die Hard Trilogy, where one of them was with a vengeance, and that was like, almost like a precursor to the Crazy Cab games, where you had to drive around to these bombs and like, make sure they didn't go off or some crazy shit. I also remember the Die Hard arcade game. I played that in Puerto Rico all the, I beat it every time. Every time. I love, uh, Die Hard is one of my favorite, um, IPs, one of my favorite franchises in history, and, uh, I'm just happy to do this kind of impromptu, quick, raw video for you guys because I just had to get some of this off my chest. I'm a Jeremy Irons as Simon Gruber stan, and John McClane is my hero, which makes me unique in absolutely no way. I would like to see a study, actually, on why so many children of the 90s gravitate towards John McClane as a heroic archetype. That would be interesting. That could be a future video. This video right here is just explaining that Die Hard with a Vengeance, that popular action films, um, especially part three, this is my favorite part three of any series, by the way, um, any official, like, numbered series, not like Antonioni's On Modernity and Its Discontents, like, actual franchise, that, that uh, popular popcorn fare can completely change your life and completely um, reward you. Because it's about being rewarded, it's about being elated, it's about getting a, a uh, natural high off of a blockbuster experience. And with that, thank you very much, Die Hard with a Vengeance, for existing. You always slap a silly grin on my face because you're like family to me. Die Hard with a Vengeance is like family. And you always stay loyal to your family. I love you, Die Hard with a Vengeance. I love you guys out there. Make sure to like this video. Make sure to comment with your thoughts on Die Hard with a Vengeance. Where does it stand in your official ranking of the Die Hard franchise? My name is Zachary Conan. Have a remarkable, beautiful, and lovable day.